Shut up and sit down. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Rebel Trading Group Podcast, episode 19. Today's day is May 23rd, 2018. It is a Wednesday, my dudes. What is up? Wednesday. I am Nathan Oliphant, and with me, as always, is the gluten-free Jason Bessing. The gluten-free Jason Bessing. What is going on, everybody? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 Nathan, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm all right. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Tired, yeah. Just perpetually on the brink of exhaustion. But it's okay. I feel like that means you're doing something right. Do you like Red Bull? I do. This is the only energy drink I will drink, but it's not my it's not my cup of tea, if you will, because of the amount of sugar. Yeah, I guess sugar-free. Try to watch the sugar. Sugar free, Jason Bessick. <laughs> I do like Red Bull. Hey, fun fun fact about energy drinks. Did you know Monster used to be a pink sheet over the counter stock penny wow. penny stock? Yeah, very interesting. Penny stocks have the potential to do it. In theory, like what their what their goal is is to go ahead and list, and then they'll grow the business so big, and then move on to the Nasdaq or the New York Stock Exchange at some other time. And, uh, of course, like 99.99% of that never happens. But every now and then, you'll get that monster energy. It was like M-N-S-T-R-Q or some craziness. And now it's just – now it's like sitting in like what, what the 40s? When's the last time I checked monster? Oh, I don't even know. At 49.92. So – yeah, just, right. I thought that was a little. I thought that was a little fun fact for you. I, I never knew that until a couple couple days ago. Okay, well, let's go into market news with Nate. Do 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 do. Hey, okay. So big news for car industry or automotive industry with the U.S. and China. China easing tariffs. Um, I think I saw from like twenty five to fifteen percent. I don't know. Um, Anyways, that was in the news, so look to the auto industry for gains in the future, long-term gains. Like that, that Ford hold sounds like really good right now. If it's paying you dividends, and if that, right. that's that's that that's happening in China, China. I love me some Ford. So you said their car market is going up. Uh, China makes massive cut to car tariffs. Mmm. Ooh, so how is that doing to the automakers today? I don't know. Everything's down today, so everything's yeah, everything getting blocked. Even Ford is down one percent on that news. <laughs> that might God knows why. You think that would I don't know. GM down, same thing. No idea. I don't get it, man. You would think that would just make it go, Oh yeah, cool. Nope. Yeah, I don't know. Um uh, I saw another headline today, um uh, the House passed legislation that would ease um, bank rich restrictions from the Dodd Frank Act. Um, look that up. That's cool. So Dodd well, Frank. Yeah, that's for they were easing restrictions for I guess banks. I think uh, there were some uh, um, some things in this new tax bill that ease like uh, regional banks. That ticker's mm. K R E. K R E. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's like the regional bank ETF, right? Yeah, it's small banks kind of. Yeah, I think Wells Fargo is like the top holding though. So is it really? I think so. It's something like that. I looked at it once. Um, other than that, uh, else go? that's about it, man. So kind of a boring time. Yeah, the market's making a rally up right now. It's it's boring. Like the Dow is down forty four points right now. We're we're coming uh, its way up, dude. During. We're doing this episode during market hours. It's up two percent so. from its lows today. Yeah, there was a, yeah there was a little swing. We dropped down below twenty four seven, and we're back up above twenty four eight. So we're having a little bit of a swing, uh, which is good. But like I said, Dow down forty five points, Nasdaq up seventeen, S and P down half a point. So boring day, boring give me, week, boring give me month. Those, give me those cryptos, baby. Oh, you want to hear the cryptos? Oh, we are just getting wrecked. Over at the cryptos, Bitcoin trading at seven thousand four ninety six. That's down eight <laughs> percent in the past twenty four hours alone. 
Um, struggling over there. I'm not exactly sure why. This might. This is just part of the ebbs and the flows, though. Lots of red candles forming. Yeah, are you on That's that one sure. day? I'm looking at the daily, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's a red candles it's forming. Candles. And you guys know I'm trading. I'm a light coin trader, and we're down below 119 now. We're at 118, and it just seems to keep dropping. Ooh. I got 676 coins being sold at 119.50. Are you on Litecoin right now? I'm looking at the Litecoin, yeah. What's Ethereum doing right now? <clears throat> Ethereum to the US dollar is down 13%. She's the biggest loser. She's at 582. Wow. Dude, I sold it this morning around like 7.9. Wow. So on GDAX, do you have to trade Ethereum by the 10th or the 100th or the 1,000th? I don't know. What's the minimum? Let me, uh, let me do a limit real quick. Uh... See if you can buy 1,000th. Okay. It's um, God, one tenth, one hundredth. So you buy by the hundred, so you yeah. can buy in like five dollar increments right now. I think so. Hold on, let me check. Let's see how much one would cost. Um, yeah, about six bucks. Yeah. So nice for the traders, that's for sure. Dude, so Ethereum's anything hot else going on right now? Are you looking at this order book? It spreads of like a dollar right now. That's, that's kind of big for Ethereum. It's huge. <laughs> we should dive in. We should get in. I don't know if I'm about it. Let's look at these one. Let's look at the one minute charts real quick. Let's look at the five, the five or fifteen minute chart. It's coming up, dude. Let's ride it out. Are you about it? You want to? I don't know. I'm not about Ethereum. I don't have much money in my. Cryptos, but the second that Why do you like paid, Litecoin versus Ethereum? Litecoin is so dirt cheap. What? That's the only reason you're buying it? Is because it's dirt cheap? Yeah, it's dirt cheap. And it has the same flows as Bitcoin and all the other ones, so why sit here and trade by the thousandth when I can trade by the tenth? But you're talking about like long-term usability. Who the fuck is using number three before number two and number one? Yeah, but I'm going by the trading. I don't care about long-term you're, okay, are you trading it? Not right now, but when I get more <laughs> capital, I will be, and that's the one I choose to be trading. Yeah. I don't know. I might go to Ethereum because it's actually cheaper per per uh, minimum you're, order. You're gonna take trading cryptocurrencies over trading call options on Robinhood. I mean, I'm gonna do both. <laughs> I like to I like to diversify into both. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on to our topic, dude. Topic du jour. Da, 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 da. While we're on the subject of crypto, accepting a loss or accepting losses. Hmm. How? When do you? When do you identify that you actually have a losing stock? Like I feel like that's that's harder than obviously identifying your winning stock. But when are you convinced? Like oh, it's just a little dip, and then when you're convinced, it's holy shit. This is the end. I need to run. So I guess you're giving on the pretext that this is you've picked this stock out for a reason. It's doing it's 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 met all your criteria and it's time to pull the trigger. And you pull the trigger and then now you're starting to lose money. But your plan was just ride out the volatility. Mm-hmm. But it's coming to the point where I'm having too much volatility. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically you bought in and you're just watching it kind of dip and dip and then it's going down and then it comes up a little bit and it goes down. When do you when like is there a, a certain point when you say okay I'm, I'm going to get out rather than buy more or just keep holding and ignore it? So is there a certain point where you like you start to get nervous and Yeah, of course. For me, I always have a plan. I always have an exit strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it hits it, it hits it, and I just look away, and I don't want to look what the rest of the time it does. Like, I'm out. That's my it's my cash. I'm not part of that stock anymore. It's me and my cash now. Yeah, everyone's got to have an exit strategy. Just, just like when you're boarding a plane, you want to know how to get the fuck out of there if shit hits the fan. You want to know how to run, when you're going to run, where you're going to run to. All that stuff. And there's there's no problem with identifying a loser after you've done your research and you know it for a fact it's a stock that you still want to keep, 
there's absolutely no problem with selling and getting out or being stop lost out. We can we'll talk about that next, but being stopped out and then re entering it later, there's no problem. Just because you sold or you got pushed out of it doesn't mean that you can't invest in it and again, you lose and it's game over. Maybe you get out at ten dollars and you let it plummet back to nine fifty before you buy in. Rather than just crash the whole time. Or uh, if you're so adamant about the stock and you trust the stock and you're still doing the numbers and it's still hitting your your marks, mm-hmm. uh, buy more. Buy more. It, it goes on your your plan with that stock. Why did you buy it? What what were you in it for? Are you in it for the dividend? Okay, usually if you're in it for the dividend, you're going to want to go ahead and buy more. It's cheaper. That's what it was for. Yeah, you're getting a higher yield as the price keeps dropping. But if it's a short-term trade – it might not be a good idea to just keep pushing into it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially if you're trading options or futures, something that's got a a uh, expiration date on it. Yeah, like a next week Ford option. <sighs> so, what what point do you identify? Do you have like a personal rule that you use, or maybe like a rule of thumb that you, that you've heard of or you know that? Like when when you should start being concerned. Like for me, I'm not start. I'm not going to start being concerned until we're about over five percent from my cost basis. I was thinking that's when I that's when I start to that's when I start to kind of raise the flag. Like okay, I need to do something. I need to manage this trade. Uh, you know, I'm a long term investor, or at least I I go in with every position with that mindset. So when I go in and it falls 5%, I'm personally going to buy more. But when I'm in my options contracts, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying more, more because risk. there's that expiration date. There's that, there's that risk, and there's the fact that, hey, I don't know what's going to happen within a week. I'm, I'm willing to take a bet in 10 years it'll be higher. I don't know what's going to happen in two months, maybe even 10 months. Do you use stop losses? No, I don't. Tell me, tell me what a stop loss order is. Oh man, you're gonna make me do this. Do I need to do it? Uh, let me. It's hard it. to. It's let hard to like it. just explain. But yeah, go for it. Uh, stop loss is the like minimum you're willing to lose, and it puts a market order at that point, right? Mm-hmm. As soon as it it's triggers like, that that price, it it does a market order, or or is it a limit order? Yeah, well, there's stop and then there's stop limit. Okay. Uh, so like yeah, with the stop loss, it's exactly like you said. Say you buy in at ten dollars a share, and you say, okay, if it hits nine eighty, I want out. So you can put in an order called a stop loss order, and you put a price below what you purchased in at. So if it's at ten, you put that order in for nine eighty. The second that the price hits nine eighty, it will trigger that order to activate, and it will sell your stock at the market when it, when nine eighty hits. That doesn't necessarily mean you'll get nine eighty, but it is a uh, that's that trigger price. If you want to make sure that you get out at an exact price at a certain point, you're going to want to use your stop limit order. And uh, it's a great tool to have because it kind of puts robotics on trading. Uh, automation. Automation. I wouldn't. I, you know what I was going for? Robotics. <laughs> it's a way to like robotically enter a position, robotically trade. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. You that know what I'm saying? That's you know the right what I mean. word. Yeah, you know what I was going for. Yeah, it's a way to to automation, and it's a way to stay disciplined because you know your emotions will take over with different stocks. I've noticed I like okay with this one, I think I'm going to go a little heavier because I like this, and this one I might take a smaller position in. Um, But no matter what you do, when you put those stop losses in, it puts that hard out. It means okay, I was wrong. I got my money back. Let's identify. Was I just was the timing wrong? Was the price wrong? Was there just some sort of event that I couldn't predict that caused it to go up or down? Um, or do I just have no fucking clue? But no matter what you do, that stop loss hits and you're out. It takes that, that emotion away. It keeps you disciplined. And that's the biggest advantage to those stop losses. I, I personally struggle with stop losses because I just hate getting stopped out. <laughs> right. I, I just – I hate it. But what the – like I said, the big advantage is that it, it takes that discipline – or it, it stays disciplined for me. It takes that emotion out of it. It's like, okay, I got stopped, and the only reason I got stopped out is because I was wrong. 
Um, and but, the but other, I, like, I just feel like I feel like sometimes I overestimate or underestimate uh, my trigger point. Like if I'm doing a long term trade, if it's like a five percent and if it's five percent, but it, it returns ten percent after that, mm-hmm. then I'm up five percent. Yeah. That's that's a hard one too because with certain stocks you're gonna want to set a wider stop loss. So if you enter in at ten dollars and your stop loss is at nine ninety five, okay, you're probably gonna get stopped out in the first ten minutes of that trade. Yeah. But if you put it for like nine eighty, you have you have some wiggle room. You're gonna let it have that that up and down that's gonna go through just uh, constant buying and selling. Obviously, you don't want to get stopped out, but you want to give your you want to give it breathing room. You want to give the the stock a little time to lift off. Nine eighty might even be too much. So it, it it's really hard to depict with funds. Obviously, if <laughs> if my if my ETF has dropped three percent, something's going on. You know, if you're three to five percent on an ETF, something's going on. So maybe you want a little tighter stop on that. I bought another share of Udow today, at the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it put me in the positive overall. Well, there you go. That's a great way to do it. You didn't use a stop loss, though, did you? No, I don't use stop losses. I'm sorry, man. But you watched, you watched that flow, that up and down movement, and you were able to identify a new price point, a new entry point, a good time to do it, right? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. So if <clears throat> if I'm saying um if if I actively monitor my portfolio that's why I don't use stop losses. Yeah. I because you're watching I think it stop losses remote. is for like a more moderate to conservative investing mm-hmm. um style cuz like you don't really you, you set it and kind of forget it. You got like shit to do. Yeah. But like I like every time I'm on my phone I'm literally opening up Robinhood. Yeah. So I don't really use stop losses cuz I'm watching that shit. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And I kind of feel the same way. I'm so active in my trading that I know I don't really need a stop loss in there because I I have the time to watch it. And if it drops that fast or that much, I can react in that amount of time. Absolutely. I, I completely get that. But for the more set it and forget it person, do you think a stop loss is, is probably their best bet sure. to protect against the downside? Sure, but you better <laughs> – you better like go get your money. <laughs> like you better like, yeah. pay attention to the stock market you gotta, a little you gotta, bit. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. be sitting like a year later. You're like, oh shit, I had like uh, 250 bucks or whatever. Oh, shit, I got stopped out. Yeah, a just year chilling. ago. And then it went up 20 percent since then. That's an interest-free yeah. gaining account. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Someone else in Wall Street just made all that money while you weren't paying attention. So I think it like involves some kind of like management. With stop losses. Okay. So so let's say you're you've you're watching one of your holdings, maybe it's one of your options, one of your stocks, and it's yeah. just it's falling, dude. You're just taking a beating. Yeah. And you can't bring yourself to buy more. You think it's just time to get out. Yep. Do you have psychological hardships with that? Like do you, does it do anything to your ego? Do you feel down? Do you feel out? Do you just feel pissed off? How do you like how do you personally deal <laughs> with it? I feel really upset. Yeah. When, when like I'm like really down, mm-hmm. like on a bad option play, oh man, I feel like oh I feel crushed. Oh yeah, because because op- <laughs> options will definitely sober you up real quick. Yeah, they'll there'd, definitely make you or break you. There'll be one day you're you're king of the world, and then and the next day no, they're taking they're taking that back what you gained, and then taking some more. Oh yeah, watching your portfolio just dip ten twelve percent in a single session. In like minutes, just just from a gap up or down. Like as soon as it opened, you're like, "Oh shit!" Well, I'm already down eight percent. The bell hasn't even rang. So what do you I've do? Do you sell? Too. Do you sell? I sold this morning. I panicked this morning. I I usually sell. I don't. I try not to panic. I identify. <laughs> I fucking panic this morning. I, I identify. I like, this is way too much. I gotta sell right now. Right now. It it really clicks in my head. Okay, don't panic. And I I analyze real quick. Okay, what is the chart telling me? Is there any news out on it? Or is it just getting crushed? Four or five percent sell off. If it's getting crushed, I'm just I'm just gonna say fuck it. I'm out. I'm gone. I'll put that cash to better use elsewhere. I'll find something else. I'll make it back. But it does do something to your personal, your ego. It, 
to your that that drive because we're all working on in this game to build our empire we're trying to expand compound make profitable trades all that shit but the second that it doesn't happen it's very humbling it's very it, it, it can be tough to deal with granted i'm dealing with maybe 20 to 50 dollar losses at most there are people out there they've they they've watched themselves lose two thousand dollars and they need to know if that if it's time to pull the plug so that does something a lot different to you. I always say that I remember – I don't really remember a lot of my winners, but I definitely remember my losers. 100%. <laughs> Absolutely. I can tell you all about my losing trades a lot faster than I can tell you all about my winning trades. So it, it, it does do something, and that's just human nature. This game is all about emotion. Man, I want to go to Vegas. We need to go to Vegas. Yeah, if you can't if you can't deal with the emotion, go to Vegas. You'll have better odds. Go put it all on black, where there's girls walking around in, in short skirts serving free drinks. Get your rush that way. If you can't identify the downside and learn when it's time to get out or go back in or double down, you're better off going to Vegas because you'll have better odds. We do need to go to Vegas, though. God, I want to so bad. You've never been, have you? No. I just want to bring like six thousand dollars and just fucking gamble on craps. Sit on a craps table for nine hours. For nine hours a day for three days straight. I'd probably hey man, I'm full of that. <laughs> just, just run the street. Do you ever go to get revenge on another on on a stock? Like, like short something, it afterwards. Something wrecked you, and you say, "Okay, yeah, yeah, now I'm going. I'm going on the downside." <sighs> no. <laughs> I did that once. I, I don't remember the exact security, but I remember I bought a call option and it quickly went to zero. Like so Fuck. I bought the put option and then the and then it just went the complete other way. So like <laughs> I identified the both the top and the bottom at the wrong time. And I was trying to guess at the time. I was just trying to guess. I was like, oh, okay, well if this is gonna go this way then it's got I gotta I gotta play it on the other way and then nope. So I just got out. I decided, no, this is not a good trade. I I can't deal with this. I'm going to put that money to better use. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the twenty dollar loss instead of the hundred dollar loss. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's trading versus investing, though. You know, like trading. you're investing, you're putting that yeah, shit lot, to the side. Yeah, investors aren't aren't going to even aren't going to quickly. All right, I'm done. I'm going straight here. Investors going to see it to the end. They're going to they're going to want to see it out. And I also feel like an investor has a much different idea of a loss than a trader does. Because traders, we're just trying to make movement, like make money off of the very small average market gyrations every day. An investor is going for long-term 40, 50, 70 percent gains in 10 years. So a 13 percent loss for a trader is humongous. But 13 percent loss for like a long-term investment. That might not be too much in the in the grand scheme of things because you know, okay, well, I've got that dividend and we're riding out the hard times. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so a trader might see the downside as much more potentially destructive to their portfolio than the long-term investor. Can, is, do you think that's agreeable? Yeah, I think so. Especially for someone who watches the market every single day, every, every waking minute, or even makes their livelihood from it. Right now. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, we're not making our livelihood. I'm definitely trying I'm, to. I'm watching the market right now. That's what I mean. I'm sorry. When, when is that day coming, Nathan, where I can just call you on Skype at 920 in the morning and we just put on headsets and start going? I'm ready for it. One year from today. One year from today. We'll be there. May 23rd, 2019. Welcome back to episode 200. <laughs> 274. What's up, people? What if we sound I really hope, weird? Okay. I hope, yeah, we're all like, we've been cracked out since then. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is funny, though. That is funny. Right, so, man. accepting losses. Anything else you kind of want to add to that? I, I think, I think that we covered it. it. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to cover, have you ever – I know you haven't really dabbled with too many other brokers, but are you familiar with the idea of the trailing stop loss? Um, yes. As like as soon, when it, like as when your stock price rises, so does your stop loss target price. 
Uh, that's exactly what it is. So just to use that $10 stock price again, you get in at $10 and you put a trailing stop loss for 20 cents. So right now, that means that your stop loss would be at $9.80, $9.80. So if your stock moves up to ten fifty, now your stop loss stayed 20 cents behind and went up to t- to ten thirty. Now let's just say something happens and it drops to ten twenty nine. Well, now that it has hit ten thirty with the stop loss, your stop loss will pull you out at ten thirty and you'll keep those profits. So it's a way to really ride the tide and then the second it it starts to hit the downside, it cuts off. And I think that is one of if one of, if not the most valuable way to use a stop loss. In fact, I would I put those on almost every position I have on my E Trade account. I was gonna say they don't have it on it, Robinhood. That'd be nice. Night. No, they don't. Maybe one day, but it it is beautiful. It is a great thing to have because it just it not only does the stop loss take the downside away, but the trailing stop loss takes the thinking out of it and just lets it lets you catch all of the upside and cuts off that downside really quickly and it does it all for you. Some brokers will charge more money to do trades like that, but uh, E Trade definitely doesn't. And I think that is one of like I said, if not the best way to cut off that downside via a stop loss. Well, that's a podcast, man. That's a fun one. What uh, what are you watching this week? Are we? Sure are you watching a crypto? Do you want me to go first? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I forgot what I was going to say. No, you're good. Let me go I, ahead and pull mine up. I remember. Oh, oh, you go first then. Oh, I forgot one little bit of market news and Nate, but this will fit in with my ticker symbol. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, ticker symbol XLF, the financial sector ETF. Uh, stocks basically, or the Fed basically said uh, for the next meeting, it's a go for rate hikes. So I'm buying banks now because when they, the interest rate goes up, that's their borrowing rate when they loan out loans. Mm-hmm. So that's more money coming in. Yep, absolutely. With the with the raising, <coughs> excuse me, with the raising of the interest rates, variable rate items such as credit cards, um, mortgages, <coughs> maybe even some student loans, are going to. <coughs> wow, excuse me. Oh, dude, the pollen here has been absolutely destroying my allergies. I am sorry. Whew. Anyway. Uh, where was I? I what, what was I even talking about? I coughed out my thoughts on that one. The federal interest rates and stuff? Oh, yeah. So as those rates increase, so those variable rates will also increase. So while it's not all dark and gloomy, savings accounts are going to go up. Uh, treasury bond rates are going to go up. CDs are going to go up. Um, so if you're an interest payer, you're going to pay more. If you're an interest maker, you're also going to make more. No, that's not true. If you're an interest payer, you're going to pay more. If you're an interest maker through one of those types of securities, you're going to make you're going to see higher yields. But that's but the idea know, behind the interest rate going up is that the economy is doing better. They're doing yeah, they're doing it's actually doing um, very well. I saw that they're going to allow it to get over two percent. The uh, inflation rate It's going to get over two percent just for a little bit. So they are pumping the brakes on the economy. They're trying to pull the money back into the system, and that's okay. Uh, so that means with that with those rates going up, they pass those that price point onto the consumer. So the banks will, in turn, in theory, be making more money, and the consumers will be paying more. And XLF has been beaten up over and over consistently on these rate hikes because people are afraid that it's going to cause credit card defaults, student loan defaults, mortgage rate defaults. So they're just selling so that they don't have to deal with that. On the banks, I feel like a lot of that stuff will happen at first as the rates go up, but it'll eventually just kind of cut out. So in turn, the banks will make more money in a rising interest rate environment, hands down. But right now, XLF has been beaten up, and that is why I'm giving your watch an A+. Fantastic. What are you watching? I am watching Stars Constellation brand. It's S Cannabis Industry. Z. No, it's a bever- alcoholic beverage. And uh, well, they hold they hold Canadian pot stocks. They hold a very small <laughs> amount. But I'm actually watching it because 
Uh, she pays a small she pays a small dividend about one percent. She had a forty billion dollar market cap, which is beautiful. Her past one year performance is great, and she seems on a chart for the past three months. She seems to be kind of right near the bottom here, and I'm liking that around two seventeen. Uh, she was all the way up to 233 just a few weeks ago. So I think she's got room to run back up. And I like the space. It's, you know, alcohol is always going to be around. And they, this company, they own like Modelo, Corona, and a lot of other brands, Svedka Vodka, just tons of other brands that we know and that we love. So I'm watching Stars. I like it. I think she looks strong uh, as a buy point here on the three on the three month chart. And even on the one month, she's broken into a new low, and she seems to be wanting to push up from that. So I like her. That's STZ, Constellation Brands. Try to get her. If you can get her under 217, I'm happy. I like it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, If you want to reach us, it's uh, our email at rebeltradinggroup at gmail.com. That's rebeltradinggroup2gs at gmail.com. Check us out on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Rebel Trading Group and on Facebook uh, dot com slash Rebel Trading Group. This was fun, man. Yeah, man. See you next time. Next time, bud.